up to the booth to have me sign or meet. And I would say 75% to 80% of people would say one of two things or a combination of two things, which is, this is my childhood. I grew up with this show. And uh, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> um, thank you so much for saying that. Uh, it's a show that I recorded well, 20 years ago originally in Vancouver, and uh, I never, ever, ever thought that I would be here talking to Canadians of every age and every creed uh, about something they grew up with that means something to them enough to say that to me. So thank you for that. Um, another question, what have you been doing since Reboot? <laughs> well, um, I did Reboot over a space of six or seven years. So when we originally recorded, um, I was doing it in Vancouver, and I was in college. I started because I was doing uh, acting in high school, and my first voiceover job was for um, Barbie and the Rockers. You know, and I played the voice of Ken. So, uh, if reboot Bob sounds like Ken, there's a correlation. Uh, and because I did that very early, and one of the first cartoons to record in Vancouver, I got some notoriety across Canada. I was in and I was in midday, and the kind of the, the hook in the story was that all American character was voiced by all Canadian. Um, so, uh, and there was a lot of talk about the fact that I didn't say the word about correctly, but I said <laughs> boot, which I didn't think I did, and then I got very um, sensitive about it, so I started really uh, working on my American accent. So, um, so by the time the reboot came around, I had perfected my American accent. So before that, I've done a show called G.I. Joe and a couple of other shows, The Hurricanes with one of them, for Geek, about a soccer team, and another show called uh, Exo Squad, where I did a character named Kazuki and another character named Victorious. So Reboot, when they originally did it, they came to me and they said, this show is going to be revolutionary. And it was funny, there was a guy who has to really get a shout out named Doug Parker, who was the casting guy for a lot of cartoons in Vancouver at the time. I had uh, worked with him and then helped him recast it, so I was kind of on the inner circle. And uh, one day they were talking about the show they were going to do, which was going to be all computer generated. Now you have to understand, there was nothing before this. You could see the Pixar, like the shorts with Luxo Jr. and all that, but there was nothing long before. So it took them a long time from talking about it to actually doing it. And one of the days I went into the studio when they were uh, doing their uh, auditions for me, and they had a promo reel that had been done um, by Mainframe, the people who did Mainframe, and there was a voice on it for the early rendering of Bob, uh, of Bob, who sounded a lot like me, and I went in, and they were playing on a large screen, and Doug was there, and I said, is that me? Like, I, like, I didn't even remember recording it, maybe I did it, I, I didn't know it. And he goes, yeah, it does sound like you, and I think at that moment, it lodged in his head that I would be the best candidate to do the show. So uh, I got the job, and we did the first recording in 93, and it took so long to get things going that in that time, I graduated uh, university at UBC, and uh, I had always wanted to go to Los Angeles as an actor, but as you know, as Canadians, they don't let you work in the States without a job offer and vice versa. So I wanted to go, but I couldn't. I ended up going on a vacation, through circumstances, I met a woman in my first five hours in Los Angeles. And we sat down to talk about uh, a script because I was also writing for TV in Canada and helped some friends with the script. And my friend said, Michael is an actor. He also did a lot of voiceover in Canada. And this woman looked at me and said, Do you do a Middle Eastern accent? And I said, um, Yes, I do. And she says, Well, um, I was thinking, God, I'm in LA for five years. I'm already five hours. I'm already being typed. <laughs> so, uh, she says, because there's a famous cartoon, and uh, the character's Middle Eastern, and they want him to have an accent, and they want someone who is actually, you know, politically correct. And I said, look in the face, and I said, there is no such character. In my animation, I've been waiting for that role my whole life, and there, there is uh, no such character. And uh, we found out the next day that the character was not uh, Middle Eastern, but it was the character of Haji and Johnny Quest. <laughs> so I said, well, he's not Middle Eastern, he's East Indian. She says, same thing. <laughs> so I said, uh, okay, I can do an Indian accent. 
spent my Civic character of seven years old, and I, I'm good, but I'm not that good. <laughs> and she says, well, now he's 17. So um, I realized that I could do it, and uh, I had a feeling that I could do it, and I called everybody that I knew, and I was referred eventually by Andrea Romano, who was the original director of the pictures, and was the head of Warner Brothers Animation Casting, and she did Animaniacs and many things at the time. And she referred me to an agent, and they got me an audition, and the rest is history. So, uh, Haji brought me to the United States. During that time, Reboot kept going in fits and starts, and I would fly back to do the group reports. To answer your questions, we did do group reports. Uh, during that time, back and forth, doing the hurricanes and things like that. Eventually, I was in Los Angeles more than not, and they let me and trusted me that I could do Bob by myself without the group report. And uh, I would record at the tail end of Tony J, his sessions at Megamind. So I was the only actor that actually knew Tony J because he was <coughs> in Los Angeles. So it was very fun seeing him do Megabyte. He was probably 6'4", and about 65, and a chain-smoking British Shakespearean actor. <laughs> <laughs> so he would sit in a chair and do a uh, few lines, three in a row, by himself. We would not play off each other. And uh, he would say, oh, yeah, that was good in my presentation. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't felt this good since my first infection. I haven't felt this good since my first infection. <laughs> and I would go after him and I would do uh, the character of Bob by myself. And I would specifically remember one session for the show Bad Ball. If you all remember Bad Ball. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, Bad Ball um, was uh, by myself for about 30 minutes just yelling at the top of my lungs. <laughs> and Chris Brough, who was the executive producer, was in my LA to, you know, to uh, supervise my reporting. And he, he had this very kind of New York kind of Dustin Hoffman accent. And he'd be like, Michael, you're hanging on the side of a trail of yell more. more. <laughs> so I was, you know, my voice was shot by the end of that uh, session, but I remember it came out very well. Um, so the other thing I've been doing is on-camera acting, and uh, the reason I have a beard right now is I've been doing a recurring role on the soap opera Days of Our Lives, which is, I'm filming again this week, which is why I have to leave in about three hours. So forgive me for leaving early. Um, but uh, I do different TV shows. I just did a pilot uh, with Josh Holloway from Lost called Intelligent on CBS. And if you see the trailer online right now, the show will start in February. Uh, I play an interrogator in the beginning of the show that kind of sets up the, the concept of the show. He's kind of like the bionic man with a computer in his brain. And uh, I'm going to do a lot of video games now. Right now I'm doing The Elder Scrolls online, doing various characters on that. I'm doing the new Marvel Universe. I play, uh, I guess I can say it without a character. <laughs> I play a character named Dum Dum Dugan. If you guys know. <laughs> I do another bad guy. Uh, I believe it's. I can't remember. You guys are going to have to tell me what happens. So uh, I was going to say it's a, it's like Sinestro, but it, I'm not sure. Somebody like that. Is that a Marvel character? Mr. Sinister, maybe. Maybe it's a Marvel character. Um, so there's that. Uh, I don't want to forget these things with you guys, so I've done all this here. Um, uh, if you have any questions, yell them out right now. Uh, on camera, I've done movies based on animated things, like, you know, in G.I. Joe, I played the character of Scoop in the final year, and I was the only actor at that out who was in the live-action movies of G.I. Joe. So I'm in the first film, G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra, and I was cast as kind of a minion of, of Cobra, but when the film came out, my face was cut out, but my voice remained, so I'm kind of the voice of the ship. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I've done, it's funny, because people bring things up for me to sign, and things I've done years ago. I'm in a Friday the 13th movie. So I'm killed by Jason. I've been killed by Jason. Uh, Jason takes Manhattan, and I've been killed by Chuck Norris in the movie. So, <laughs> so I don't know what else, who else I should be killed by, but uh, I'm in Transformers 2, Revenge of the Palm, and I play uh, two of the, one of the two Egyptian Interpol characters. Um, I do voices of robot chicken over the years, and that's a funny story. I've told this in Calgary, I'll tell it again. <clears throat> um, I originally uh, was friends with uh, Seth Rogen, 
Seth Green, <laughs> uh, his girlfriend at the time, was a good friend of mine. And um, she knew I did voices, and Seth had been hired to do a show for Sony's website called Screen Blast. And um, we did these sketches, which was kind of Saturday Night Live with live action, you know, animation. So we did the show, nothing really happened, and then he sold the show to Cartoon Network called Robot Chicken. So he called me up and said, hey Michael, we're doing the show again, but we have to redo all the sketches so they kind of technically own the old stuff. The problem is now, we got a lot more money and celebrities, so you know the sketch you did for uh, making fun of the karate kid called Enter the Fat One, about making fun of Joey Patone. I'm like, yeah, he goes, well, we got Joey Patone. <laughs> <laughs> we got Pat Maria, which I did both voices originally. So do you want to be Yakuza number two? I'm like, that's fine. We're going to pay you this time, even then. <laughs> so, um, so that's how Robot Chicken came around. And then as you, if you watch the show, does anybody watch the show? Yeah. yeah. Um, they got more and more celebrities as the show went along. So the people that were just kind of utility actors would do less and less. Um, I'm just really good at this stuff. Okay, video game, video games. If any of you guys input information onto IMDb, okay, I am in Call of Duty Black Ops 2, okay, and I am the multiplayer announcer, whatever that means, but it's not on me. Okay. <laughs> I'm in Assassin's Creed Revelations, I play Doreen, who is the son of uh, Altair, okay, I'm in Uncharted 2 and 3, Zocom 4, Quantum of Solace, uh, 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 what was the other game we were just talking about? Anyway, a lot of games. Run my one half. Is anybody into that? It's funny because I signed a, a DVD of it yesterday, and uh, I recorded that show 20 years ago as well for about 15 minutes. <laughs> so it's amazing that it, it has a, a life of its own, these things. Um, uh, okay, so if you have questions, think of them now, tweet them. And I'm going to go to the first tweeted question on the thing here, okay? This is cool. This is really cool. Yeah. Every uh, remain uh, silent uh, in text. Oh, let's go load all of them. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, okay. The question is from Cassandra, Joe the Bucket. Are you used to all the Canadian fans gushing over how you are far from reboot? No. <laughs> I, I wish you all could be in my position to have countless people come up to you and say, this was my childhood, I love Bob, I watched it with my dad, I watched it with my mom, I watched it with my brother, my cousin, my grandma, whatever. It's amazing. And I will say this, I found this out yesterday. A lot of people who are in their 20s watched reboot on YTV after school. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Well, I want you to tell your parents that I apologize if you didn't do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> so if you did poorly on a math test or social studies, you can blame Bob for me. <laughs> okay. um, uh, what Bob catchphrase is your least favorite and what, and would you please say the line just once? <laughs> uh, no. I don't think so. <laughs> I've told this story before, but it's, it's a good one. So when I got the original script for the pilot of Reboot, um, there was this line, I don't think so. And I grew up in the 80s, and I completely thought it was a purposeful reference to a rap song. Does anybody know the rap song? Yeah. Who, who knows the rap song? I just remember the, that one there, but no, I don't think so. Okay, and do you know the name of the song? Okay. The song is Going Back to Cal. Yeah. Yeah. LL Cool J. <laughs> and the refrain, like you're saying, is I'm going back to Cal. I'm going back to Cal. And then he stops and says, huh, no. I don't think so. <laughs> so I thought it was a reference to this. So when I did, did the line, I did it with that emphasis. I don't think so. So it takes on a life of its own and comes full circle. A couple years ago, I ended up meeting LL Cool J <laughs> in Los Angeles and I told him this story. And he just looks at me and he went, 
Yeah, I like that. <laughs> 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 he licked his lips. Okay. Okay. Oh, great question. Uh, sober passion aspects. What changes have you observed in the animation industry since reboot in '94, positive or not? Okay. First off, as I said earlier, reboot was the first computer-generated animated series, 100%, uh, which was in it was the first long-form animated series. The only, I, I believe we beat Toy Story, or Toy Story came out maybe just a little bit before, but we had started recording. When I went to see Toy Story in the movie the theater, I was like, this is amazing. And a lot of people were uh, resistant to CGI. Traditional animation is still going. Now, if you look in the movies, every single feature film release is CGI. And the only one that they did, and they lost money on it, was uh, The Princess and the Frog. And they tried to do traditional animation. So things have come 180 degrees on this. And most of the animated series now are done CGI in some way. So things have changed in that way. I think that's a good thing. I think animation in any way is a good thing. What I've also noticed, which I was kind of on it, the beginning tip was, and this is around 94, was the Disneyization of voice casting, which is that it used to be you could get maybe a celebrity or kind of a, an actor who was right for a role and cast the rest with voice actors. But then Disney realized we gotta promote this movie or TV show with recognizable faces and names so that they would get people that would look like or embody the character. Now, I benefited by this from the role of Haji. They wanted somebody who looks like Haji. I got into the States. But what's happened now is most animation movies and uh, animated series, they're, they're stunt casting or they're looking for celebrities. And I understand that there's a lot of uh, money that goes into it and they want to ensure their investment. And Vancouver is still a place where people who are not famous can do voices on animated series because they're kind of not at the other level that they're looking for. But I think that's a negative for actors, but you guys benefit to get big superstars doing voices in cartoons. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm trying to do this quickly here. Um, CL Chaos. Michael Benyer um, is the voice of uh, Mike the TV as annoying <laughs> as he is uh, in the show. Okay, well, I will answer that no. Uh, Mike the TV was played by a guy named Mike Donovan, who uh, also voiced uh, Cecil, 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 and uh, Paul. And um, he ended up taking over the directing and uh, voiceover directing from Andre Roman. So uh, he's a very good guy. I actually was there when helping cast when he was first cast in a show called Captain and the Game Master. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it was funny. I was very young at the time, and I was helping in casting. And he came in and did a DJ in Vancouver. And I was helping the American casting uh, director. And uh, he was a very persnickety guy, this American casting director. And I don't think he liked his sandwich that I brought him for lunch. <laughs> he left to get something else. And I was left with Mike Donovan, who I just met. Uh, to do this character, and the audition was a character, for, a character called the Eggplant Wizard, if anybody knows this character. <laughs> so he was doing this character, and it was a, like a ramshack, this is the beginning of Vancouver's cartoon days, like, like corrugated, uh, like eggplant stuff, like not eggplant, but like eggshell stuff, like, it was like all jerry -picked. And he was looking at me, and I said, the character is the Eggplant Wizard, and he's got big lips, like this. <laughs> so he goes, okay, and he did this voice, and he got cast in that. So Mike Donovan started voice directing a little bit thanks to me, and then he ended up returning the favor directing me. Uh, 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 okay. Um, I don't have any questions here, guys. Hold on. Michael Benier, out of all the episodes you did as Bob, what was your favorite? I've answered this before. I will not change my answer to appease a new audience. It is the uh, message from Wizards and Warriors. Yeah. Now, I will give you my reason for answering that. Um, number one, if you think about it, all of 
the shows, when you reboot, reboot, into games, it's simply playing a game. Because it was a Dungeons and Dragons spoof, it was a role play. <coughs> So that Bob then had to play another character. So that as an actor, I was playing a character, playing another character. So to me, it was the most interesting and layered performance as Bob, as it were. He had the uh, scrub, and remember he had a scar, and he had to play the thief, which was that. He wasn't the hero, he was kind of the uh, anti-hero. And it was written by a friend of mine named John Hart. Okay, uh, 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 what was your favorite reboot memory over the years of playing Bob and working with the rest of the cast? Okay, those are two different things. Working with the, with the cast before the beginning was amazingly fun. Um, I was friends with uh, Gary Chalk, who was amazing and really fun. Bill Hayes, who was the original voice of one of those two guys, I don't know which is which. Um, and uh, all those guys were great. Scott was great when he came in as well. I knew Kathleen around, she was great. And Jesse Moss was just a kid at the time, and he ended up being replaced by other kids, right? I think four people played and so all together. And I've seen Jesse over the years. He's a very successful on-camera actor. You can see him in things. He's a great guy. And Mike Donovan was great. Everybody was great. It was just a lot of fun. Some of the favorite memories of Reboot, I will relate to you. So today you all know that I am the voice of Bob because someone tells you and points to me saying this guy is the voice of Bob in Reboot. Now, originally at that time, I was living in Los Angeles. And it only aired in the States on ABC on Saturday mornings. Canada, they started to air the show, as you all know, on YTV, three times a day. What was it, every day, or was it three times a week? Every day? Okay, every day for the last 20 years, okay. <laughs> so when I would fly back to Canada, uh, I would go to customs and say, what am I doing here? I'd say, I'm an actor, and say, what do you do? I'm doing a cartoon of what the show, reboot, reboot. Who are you in Reboot? And I say, I'm Bob. No way! And he would tell me. I'm Bob from Reboot here. Love that show, man. Right on. Okay. And no one would know it was me. So over the years, though, when the occasional time I would tell someone, someone would find out, it was, it was really funny. So one time I was flying cross country in Canada, and, and I was sitting next to a woman with her two kids, and they were about eight or nine years old, and they were playing with. Bob action figure. <laughs> and I said, uh, you just couldn't resist that for two hours on the plane. I'm like, so by the way, you know what? Uh, I'm Bob. And she goes, well, what do you mean, like, like in a mall? <laughs> in a mall? I guess she thought like there was a, you know, reenactors in a mall. I said, no, no, I, I do the voice for Bob. Uh, and she goes, oh, you have to get your autograph. So uh, I ended up signing my autograph on a uh, bar bag. <laughs> that is out there somewhere. Um, the other really great story, which my friend uh, is all reminding me, was I did a movie in '96 called Underworld, not the one with the lichen and all. This was a model movie with Joe Mantegna and Dennis Leary, and I spent about a week with uh, Dennis Leary in this limousine sequence before I killed. And uh, one day we're sitting there, we got to talk for days. We got six days in this. So I said, I'm here, I'm doing this cartoon. And he goes, oh, you know cartoons? And I was like, yeah. He goes, uh, do you know Andre Romano? And I said, yes, actually, I do. He knew Andre, who directed I said, I did the show Reboot. He goes, whoa, whoa, what do you do on Reboot? <laughs> <laughs> I said, do uh, you know Reboot? He goes, yeah, I know Reboot. <laughs> what do you do on Reboot? And I said, oh, I play the character of Bob. Yo, Bob on Reboot? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes. Do you know what he goes, yes. And he told me the story that his daughter was a at the time, and he shared that she was autistic, and that for several months she'd been um, saying this word Reboot, Reboot over and over again, and one Saturday morning he came down and she was pointing at the television because she responded to the kind of the, the look of the show, and she was like, Reboot, Reboot, Bob, and he found out what it was, and kind of looked at me, and we kept doing the scene over and over, and he says, where do I tell my wife I met Bob for Reboot? <laughs> So that was pretty cool that Joe Mantegna knew who I was. Voice acting, often record dialogue without other cast members. Is it better if you hear how the other dialogue is delivered? Yes, obviously. If someone's like, how are you doing? You're like, I'm great, thanks. It doesn't really work. You have to know what the, you know, the other thing is. So usually it helps that a director is keeping track of that if you're not. <coughs> 
together in the uh, in the same room. But it, I think it does make for a better show if you're playing off each other, obviously. Yeah. Um, 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 is there less pressure to audition for voice work compared to live action? Emphasis on voice rather than looks, age, etc. I think I would say that's a given. The number one thing that a lot of people probably don't think about for me especially, is um, I don't have to learn my lines <laughs> when I do a voiceover audition. Um, so it's funny, there's a, there's a trend now for video game acting, especially motion capture, where they want you to memorize the line for the video game audition like you're in a movie audition. And I look at these people and I'm like, come on, come on, you're gonna learn these lines? And it's always some sort of technical or military or, you know, thing or whatever. But um, yes, yeah, there's less pressure uh, to learn lines in a voiceover, but it's also more freeing, as this question is asking, which is you don't have to necessarily look like the character, be the same age, even the same gender, or same uh, life form. Is that what you would know, <laughs> Life form, you know? Um, you're reminding me all now. I'm going to take a, a moment to do this. Uh, this. This con, not as much, but the last couple cons, a lot of people would say to me, uh, you don't look like I imagined Bob to look like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to say that um, 20 years ago, when we did the show, I had long hair and blue skin. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to tweet a picture right now. I did this for you guys uh, of uh, me. Uh, what? Yeah, this is it. Okay. Uh, 20. I'm doing this right now. Live tweet with me, guys. Here, hold on. 20 years ago. Me and Bob. Bob and me. It's like, Bob, you're going to get it right now. This is crazy. Live tweeting in front of you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, has anybody requested me in the last 20 minutes that I've been talking? Try. Okay, let me um, accept all those things. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. This is not going very well here. Um, so, oh my god, 16 follower requests. Here we go. We got it today. Okay. Okay. Just pause recording on that. Whoever's recording this, this is not exciting. Okay. So those have those all been approved, and you can all look down now and. Oh, me 20 years ago, recording, what's going on here? I don't know. Um, so that works. Now, uh, 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 um, someone was not let in, I'm sorry, golden girl number five. I hope it's not the art. Okay. <laughs> Can I still do the Bob scream? Somebody in this room asked that question? That was me. So, is this the screen where, uh, where, where Bob was shot into the net? Is that the referring you're talking about? No, I was referring to uh, hanging off the edge of a train. Oh, that screen. <laughs> I don't want to blow out your ears with the microphone. But it was something, you know, it was something like, uh, something like this. Uh, Glitch! Anything! Something like that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 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 thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Favorite reboot character? Let me think. Uh, <laughs> other than Bob. Okay, here we go. Other than Bob. Um, that's a good question. Can you guys yell out various characters and I'll say by the Hack and Slash! Like the TV. Like the TV. Like the TV.
<laughs> this, is, this is a good one. So I record auditions from home. I, by the way, do voices like on Jimmy Kimmel now, like I did sketches last week. I did, the, if anybody saw the sketch of Breaking Bad, the spoof, I did the Dutch announcer for uh, Breaking Bad spoof. So I do things from home, and, and I also do like voice matching. Do you guys know anything about that? Okay. So that there's actors in movies, that, like this actually happened, okay? So I got the part on the pilot with Josh Holloway. I go to the shoot, and we're sitting there between takes, and I said, by the way, I said, it's really weird, the day that I got this job, I was sent an audition to match your voice for a movie. And he's like, really? <laughs> I didn't even know they did that. And I'm like, yes, they do. So he has a slight um, southern accent, so I had to match his voice to replace dialogue of his in a movie. He didn't even realize that. So I get those all day long. And the other thing is, I get the video game auditions, and I do most of them from my home, on my computer. So I did one months earlier, and I get a booking from my agent saying, you're doing a job called The Old Republic, okay? So I get it back, and I'm like, what is this? And then I Google it before he responds. I'm like, oh my god, it's Star Wars. It's finally happening. <laughs> so I'm so excited. I go to the thing. It's the studio in Los Angeles. I get there, and these two engineers give me about this much, like, about 400 pages of script. Like, Here we go. And I look at it, and I look down, and it's complete gibberish. <laughs> and I said, this is a joke, right? He goes, no, it's not. I go, this is gibberish. He goes, yes, it's an alien language. And I said, you're joking. <laughs> he goes, no, he goes, you auditioned. And I was like, I remember. I was like, oh my god, I auditioned, like, not even remembering that it was like some kind of, well, get to just like that, oh, something like that, you know? <laughs> and I was like, you got to be kidding me, OK? And we had. 400 pages. <laughs> okay, so I said, um, okay, so he goes, so go in the booth, here's the script, we'll play you a reference, and you would like you to do it for the reference, and then one as your own. Okay? So it's like, baka, 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 whoo, right? And you hear that on your thing, and you go, baka, 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 whoo, right? And you go, baka, 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 whoo, okay, your own thing, okay? So as I'm doing this, this goes on for four hours. <laughs> four hours. Now, I'm not going to lie, okay? After the first page, I said, look, no offense, okay? I said, do you mind if I don't hear the reference? Because really, no one speaks this language. <laughs> okay, right? And he's like, okay, okay, right. So I'm thinking it's going to help take time off of the recording. About every 10 minutes or so, I would just start laughing. <laughs> and they say, what, what's so funny? I said, number one, I go, this is what's so funny. Number one, that I'm doing this. <laughs> number two, that somebody wrote this. <laughs> number three, <laughs> that somebody recorded it. <laughs> number four, if my dad could see how I make a living. <laughs> so I finished that. Record time, like because I didn't do the what you know third of the time I was doing the other reference, and he goes, "Great, here's another one." And I was like, "What?" He goes, "You also got this other alien creature." <laughs> so then I had to go through another two hours of these alien creatures. So when you do video games, it's a lot of acting by yourself to these totally random lines that you have no idea the context. And sometimes, I'm, I'm doing this show, the, El the game, The Elder Scrolls, which will be the World of Warcraft type online for The Elder Scrolls. And it's a, it's a large job. I've done maybe five recording sessions. And they give me the script, and I have no idea what is happening at all. <laughs> and I'm literally reading it live, cold, live. So sometimes I'm like, give me a second to read this before so I know what I'm saying. So, and I'm playing some sort of vaguely Teutonic accented Schwarzenegger, but not kind of, you know, it's just crazy. So anyway, the guy does this, but, and then you do yelling. That's the other thing with video games, okay? And a lot of voice actors don't want to do games where they yell. And most of the war games that are like so calm, all these things, it's basically yelling, put it in the hole! Like for four hours, <laughs> <laughs> at the top of your lungs. And they don't want you to do it nicely. Don't go fire in the hole. They don't want you to, you know, yell at it until your life depends upon it. So that's the question to answer how different that is. Let me see if there's any more of these. Hold on a second. 
what can you tell us about those things? Now, has the tweet of the picture gotten to you guys? Yeah. Okay, good. I, it's a black and white photo, so you can't see that I have loose hands. <laughs> Michael Bender, if you could voice act in any video game, current or in development, which would it be and why? Okay, let's just go through all the video games of all time. <laughs> um, I want all of you, at the count of three, to shout out your suggestion, and I will probably hear my answer to that. One, two, three. Kirby! Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the doll I like the person that yelled Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't, but Mario was supposed to solve it like this, you know? Okay, right? And Pac Man, I don't know what his group sounds like, okay? <laughs> 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 what is the before and the after? What is Tetris after? Okay. I believe that Tetris would sound a little something like this. Because Tetris is Russian. <laughs> Tetris would be like, it's your move. <laughs> I'm gonna do this while you move. <laughs> In Russia, we move you. <laughs> shows them how many people are interested in this and that. I don't really know how a like, t-shirt would show them the interest in the reboot, but they're doing it that way. Look, I honestly, truly believe in my mind they will do more reboot. Now, do I think it'll be the same itineration as we've seen? Will I be in it? I don't know. They might reboot, reboot. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know Brad Pitt could do a feature film version of it. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it'll happen. I think it'll happen. So, um, I am going to uh, put the questions to you. Now, have you guys got any questions that I haven't answered? Anybody? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, you're looking at me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite glitch tool? <laughs> uh, my favorite glitch tool would have to be Twitter because it has been created in your life all my iPhone. <laughs> Glitch, call my mom. <laughs> I did not set this up, but I'm going to tell you right now, my mother's name is Nanette. And this is weird because I come from... Disney 
reputation of casting if you're going with celebrities that we know. Uh, I think those are great actors, both of them. Um, I think that Gary Chalk has shown that he can do it, right? Uh, I think Gary would be great. Um, and who knows? Maybe Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Can we hear your version? What would it be? Can we hear your version? It's Bob 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? Yes? Uh, due to the nature of uh, just how valuable the uh, is, do you think that there was a lot of robotics in the Great question. The question is, uh, given the malleability of CGI acting, do I feel that uh, there was a lot of improvisation uh, given to that? Um, that? We have, what is that, five minutes? Is that what that means? Okay. Um, the end result, which is the animation, whether it's CGI or traditional animation, so much time goes into it that by the time they get the uh, voice recording that you've done, they've decided what they like. Um, they did trust us and me uh, as we went on doing the show to, I think, the, the, in the episode of Wizards and Warriors, there was a lot of improvisation in that. And, uh, but most of the lines were written. Um, and, you know, I think that people who create a show, they have an idea. I'm just an actor. You know, I go in and I try and give my spin on what can you take at the time of what, what it was. And I do want to say this is that. So many people came up and said, I, I loved you growing up. No, you loved the character of Bob from Reboot, which was a collaboration of hundreds of people over 10, 15 years. And I was just a guy who went in and recorded the voice for four hours at a time, or maybe 30 minutes. And I was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. And I want to thank you all for your affection in saying that, but it really is a collaborative effort to do something like that. And. Um, uh, it's just an honor when people say that. Another question. Two more questions. Okay. Yeah, how did the film, uh, when Reboot started taking a darker turn, and your character disappeared for, for a few episodes? Okay, the question was, how did it feel when Reboot took a darker turn and um, my character was lost for a few episodes? Okay, first of all, I want this, because this is on record, I want this. I've never seen more red uh, vests in one location. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this will be on record because uh, uh, Chris Lloyd, who played Doc Brown, is here. There are a multitude of Michael J. Fox outfits from Back to the Future, and you're wearing one, and this is amazing. And it's a boon to the red leather vest business in this town. So, <laughs> um, to answer that question, I had nothing to do with season three. And uh, I've said this before, I had no idea there was a season three being recorded without me. I was doing my own thing in Los Angeles. I only found out after the fact. I've never seen the season. I'm friendly with Ian Corlett. We worked together on shows before that. He's a guy doing a job. No worries there. And ironically, years later, I think it was because the fans were like, why did you change the voice? They're like, we should do something about this. And they used it in the storyline for my two followers. So it worked out well, and here I am today. One more question? Two more questions. Yes. Oh, yes. Anyways, uh, like it, the BSNP was censoring it pretty much anything that was subtle in the first two seasons of Reboot. Well, except for when Hexadecimal said, damn you, fool. Like, it, what was your reaction on this? Uh, the question was BSNP, which was yeah. the broadcast standards and practices of ABC. The first season or two, two seasons were done in conjunction with ABC. I'm doing this quickly because we've got to wrap it up. Basically, uh, there was more, um, they were more child aware for the American networks, and then when they lost that broadcast, where they could do it more they wanted, and that's how season three came so dark. But one more question, real quick, I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, weapon of choice, sword or butter knife? <laughs> 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 the question is, weapon of choice, and I will leave you with this. Prepare to taste the wrath of my butter knife. <laughs>
guys? Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. Reboot!